Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. I'm going to go over uh, my presentation for job embedded professional development, particularly focusing on co-teaching. I'll start with my agenda for today. I apologize, it's a little bit small. Um, we'll start with a think, pair, share, and then we'll jump into the needs assessment results. I had shared the needs assessment with you um, a couple weeks ago to kind of figure out and identify areas of growth for our site. Um, I'll review what co-teaching is, as well as um, discussing some of the strategies, and we'll talk about what job embedded profession, um, professional development looks like and how it can be implemented and paired with co-teaching. And then we'll move on to our lesson planning activity. So our think, pair, share. So currently with your elbow partner, just kind of chat with one of the questions. Pick one of the would you rather. So thinking right now, I'll read them out loud, but number one, would you rather have four periods lasting 80 minutes or eight periods lasting 40 minutes? Number two, would you rather have to arrive an hour early to work or be required to stay an hour late for work? Or number three, would you rather eat a school lunch every day or ride the bus to and from school every day? So choose one of the questions that you want to answer and think for a moment, and then I'll call out and ask you to share. So choose one of the questions, and then you can tell me which one you prefer. So whenever you're ready to share, you can raise your hand and share. Yes. Um, I think I would rather do, or me and my partner talked, and we, we think we'd prefer to have the four periods lasting 80 minutes because then we'd really be able to delve into the content a little bit deeper with the students and get more face time with them. I like that. That's a good idea. I also agree. I would prefer the 80 minutes versus the 40 minutes. Does anyone else want to share? Yes. I'd rather arrive an hour early as opposed to staying an hour late. And why an hour early versus staying an hour early? Um, I guess just getting more done earlier in the day and having more time at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So I would prefer to have an hour early in the morning versus being an hour late, I like to get home afterwards. Anyone else want to share? Yes. Um, I would rather eat a school lunch than ride the bus, just because I would rather not waste the time riding the bus both ways. I'd rather have more time at home. I agree. Wonderful, thank you for sharing. I'll go ahead and move forward. So let's talk about this needs assessment. I sent you a short assessment that talked about maybe some of the, I'll wait till that's done. Talked about some of the current needs of our site and particularly around a co-teaching and the type of supports that we receive for professional development. So it was sent to all staff on the site. Um, it, um, these are just some of the results just demonstrate some of the current needs. And then it's talking about how we're going to use these results to transform or change and audit the professional development that we're currently receiving. So just kind of quickly reviewing the results. So I asked you just about four or five short questions. Um, the first one talks about co-teaching is an area in which our site could improve. Um, it was really interesting because um, some individuals said they agree, nor do they disagree, but we have quite a few that they were strongly agree or agree. So definitely an area that we want to continue to focus on. I know co-teaching is something that's not particularly new to our um, to education, but for our district, co-teaching is quite new as we're implementing it not only in the secondary setting, but also in primary. Also, improving co-teaching strategies could positively affect the academic performance of general and special education. Our district is very inclusive, so we're including more of our students who have disabilities into our classroom, being able to accommodate and modify. And so looking at this, you can see as well, quite a few, a majority actually strongly agree and agree. And then others, there's only a small amount that agree and nor disagree. Moving on, um, I feel confident in my ability to co-teach with fellow teachers. This is our third year going in as a secondary site with co-teaching. So you can see that most agree that they can co-teach with their fellow teacher. And again, co-teaching can be done with gen two gen ed teachers or with one gen ed teacher and a special education teacher. Over here, the last one says, I'm interested in participating in a co-teaching professional development seminar. A lot of professional development um, seminars that are geared toward, toward co-teaching often take place at the beginning of the year, maybe um, before the school year starts. There's one or two days where you're given some release time, and then you're left on your own to implement those strategies. Increased 
collaboration among teachers positively affects student outcomes. As you can see, the majority agree and strongly agree with this. And as we're moving forward with co-teaching, how can we provide professional development beyond providing just seminars? So a quick review about co-teaching. I've talked about this before. Again, this is not a new concept, but as we're going to be talking about job and better curriculum, how that can be paired with co-teaching. So co-teaching is defined as two teachers who work together to instruct students within a classroom setting. Um, they share the planning, the organization, the delivery of the content, um, again, you can have two gen ed teachers, you can have one special education teacher, one gen ed teacher, it just depends on the current site's needs, and then um, the, the teachers that are available. There's seven different strategies that are used for co-teaching um, in the classroom, but most importantly, I think what I want everyone to leave with today is co-teaching is not just two teachers, but it's a, a shared mindset and attitude that they are both within the classroom, and that's their classroom and their students. So again, importance of co-teaching, it creates a more collaborative learning environment for students and educators. It allows us to model for those students how to work with one another. It allows for more one-to-one -one learning, depending on what type of um, the co-teaching strategies that you use. It supports a more inclusive classroom environment when we've seen through data that there's a larger number of students who have diverse needs within the classroom now than there was quite a few years ago as we're moving towards a more inclusive environment, this supports that inclusivity, inclusivity. And then it helps meet the needs of a more diverse population. Yes? I just wanted to say that I really appreciate you following up with this data that you took from us um, and presenting it to us in this way. I'm really excited for the ways that we're going to be able to move forward with co-teaching as a site. And I think that um, the process that you shared with us is really going to be helpful with that. And can you share what year um, you were on for co-teaching? Sorry, what was that? Um, can you share what year you're going on for co-teaching? Is this your first or second or third? Oh, I'm going into my second year co-teaching. Second year co-teaching. So, so far with your co-teaching, what type of professional development have you received? Has it been primarily through online resources? Has it been in person um, and within the classroom or more of a seminar setting like it is right now? Um, I would say that it's been more um, of the seminar setting, but not um, as continuous as would be ideal. Um, just kind of getting a little bit of information towards the beginning of the year with a little bit of follow-up throughout, but um, just waiting for the bell. M um, more robust and over time support is really valuable. You make a really great point there, and it's interesting to hear the type of professional development that you've currently received. And then as we'll continue through the PowerPoint, we'll talk about the opportunities that will be given throughout the rest of this year and how we can really change that type of support, right? I think we need to make that transition to more effective and relevant professional development, which is going beyond the seminar and just transferring information from one teacher to another at the beginning, but also having that information and the support and feedback within that learning environment where things happen, where we can have maybe mentors or coaches, having um, other instructors observe and then provide that instant feedback and how we can improve those strategies and see that, that positive um, academic improvement for our students. I agree, that really speaks to my experience. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. We're gonna watch a short video about talking about job embedded professional learning because I think Job embedded professional learning is something that we don't often see, but I think that is also because, um, you know, thinking of co-teaching and the, you know, the structure of professional development and how it's been done throughout the years is primarily geared towards the seminar sessions, a lot of lecturing. And so we want to create and transform that professional development again to something that's more um, relative to what teachers are learning and the environment that they're in. And so that's why I think it's so great that we can create the job embedded professional development and pair that with co-teaching. Sorry, everyone, give me one second to turn on the 